popularity of yoga and how it has transgressed uh, all uh, barriers and transcended all uh, limitations and reached to the world. Specifically after COVID-19, do you think that uh, the uh, concept of yoga has got more steam and importance? I think it's even more critical now post COVID, but I think that it's harder for us to find the um, motivation, the self motivation, and the opportunities because the opportunities have changed. So many studios have closed. It's really back to the practitioner now. I feel that, you know, you can't just go to as many um, physical studios, but there are so many online options. And then my my own belief is that yoga really is for all and yoga is beyond words um you know i've taught in countries that i don't speak the language i've taught in countries that speak my um own language chinese or mixed language of chinese and english or in indonesia where i only know a few words or in thailand where i can only say inhale and exhale in english but that the presentation um, connection with the body the mind as noah says but i think so critical is the breath mm. this breath of ours that leads to the heart because during covid i think so many of us held our breath Correct. you know we just felt so constricted we felt so afraid um in it's believed that we hold so much grief in our lungs and so much of our health is in our lungs so even more than ever i think it's important to connect the mind the body and the breath and the heart because yoga is you know you asked why do so many people like it i think because of how they feel you may not know what happened you can't remember anything that the instructor said but you do know how you feel mm. and you feel good that's a good point and you feel great <laughs> You feel, you feel like not master of the universe, but just good enough to be able to get through life. So for pros COVID, getting through life is a different life now. This might be the way for all of us to find just one moment of quality breath, mm. which might get a view into our life. It might make the day better. And everybody remembers good Shavasana because that's, that's the best when you come out. Oh my, where was I? Right. That was very blissful, whatever that was. And that I think makes everyone want more. Who doesn't want to be happy? Sure. Good points you there. Know? Good points, Kora. What, what do you have to say when, uh, you know, it is asserted that yoga has been an eternal and in, an integral part of uh, healthcare uh, and of uh, mindful living. You know, there have been different branches of yoga which have stemmed up in the past as well. There's been Kundalini yoga, there's been Vinyasa yoga, there's been Bikram yoga, there's been Power yoga. But yet, you know, the, the macro concept of yoga has been untouched. It is still pure, it's still pristine, and it is still respected throughout the world. What is it about this practice, this ancient practice, that, uh, you know, in fact, invokes a lot of respect wherever it goes? Well, you mentioned many yogas, but they were all hatha yoga. They were all the physical form of yoga. Yeah. And there's that's all encompassed in Raja yoga, which has all the facets of yoga, the physical, the emotional, the good works, the karma, the yana, the knowledge. Um, that's very profound. When we say yoga, we think of the physical, we think of the asana, we think of the movement. But at the end of the day, that movement, you know, I came into Buddhism as a child from meeting a monk and I took Buddhism not because of my family, but because of him, because of the, the quiet. And yet I could not find the quiet, 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 the, 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 the whole being quiet until my body also came into play. So there's meditation. There's breathwork, pranayama. Um, there's just self-reflection, svajaya. But at the end of it, all encompasses to have an effect, a residue, an echo. And that echo is a connection. 
you know, yog, right? To yog. It's connection with myself and with the infinite, the divine. If you don't believe in one divine over the other, it's that which is in everything. And I think that that is the hook. So it's not just the physical, because there's some yogis that barely move, you know, in an ashram, you barely move. And then there's ones that are super gymnastic um, with hot and uh, very vinyasa, a lot of movement. But these are all encompassed, right? I use a lot of props in my style of yoga. I'm also older. And, you know, balance has become more of something that I'm questioning now. And as we age, I think it's even more critical to practice and to know that this practice can age with you. You know, I used to joke that I better learn golf soon because I'm getting so old that that's the only sport that I can do. (laughs) But, you know, yoga has shown me that, I mean, I did not come to it young. I came to it at 30. And so I've had a good 30 years now at 61 relationship with this practice. Mm. So I came into it as a young woman looking for, you know, relief from my job and from the bank and from finance. And then I found that it helped me with the passing of my parents, with the shift of my life, Mm. um, the change in my marriage, you know, finding a new relationship. I mean, just that the opportunities and that I never gave up because this yoga practice was always there. I could not despair because I had this friend and the friend of this practice is greater than any handstand, you know, because at the end of the day, it won't matter how many handstands I did or headstands, Mm. but how I dealt with the world. And I know that yoga makes me more aware. And when I'm more aware, I can deal with the world. And then the world reflects that. Mm. Yeah. Mm, Absolutely. Good points. Touching points, Kora, made by you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.